Hello, and welcome to episode 10 of Chemistry in 15 Minutes or Less. My name is Audra, and this review lesson is on chapters 6 and 7, part 3, Polyatomic Ions. Now, a polyatomic ion is a charged group of covalently bonded atoms. This means that they probably have a negative charge, because that's just the way these tend to come out. Most are what are called oxyanions, meaning they include oxygen, and they must stay as a group in formulas. You can't break them up or separate them because they are a unit, they are bonded together. Now, when multiples of a polyatomic ion are present, you must use parentheses in order to show that there's more than one of them. For example, if we look at aluminum nitrate, since this only has a 1 minus charge, you have to have three of them in order for the charges to be balanced, and put it in parentheses. Because if you just put an extra three by it, it'll look like there are nine oxygens, and instead there are three nitrogens, nine oxygens. Now there are, is a lot of memorization involved in this one. For polyatomic cations that you need to memorize, there's only one. It's called ammonium, and it's NH4 plus one charge. Now there are a lot of anions to memorize, so let's just go through the other ones first. We have carbonate, which is CO3 with a two minus charge. Acetate, which is CH3COO, the one minus charge. It's organic, which is why it is, looks so weird instead of having C2O2H3. Hydroxide, which is OH with a 1 minus charge. And cyanide, which is CN with a minus charge. Now, the oxyanions are going to get a page because they have something, they have specific rules that they follow, and we might as well just go over them all together. Now, the most common form is the 8 form, which is something like chlorate, which is ClO3 with a 1 minus charge. If you memorize the chlorate, you don't have to memorize bromate or iodate and the other following prefixes because they all look the same. Now, if it has one less oxygen atom, it is the ite form, which in this case is ClO2, still with the 1 minus charge, it keeps the charge of the original anion, and then hypoite, which would be hypochlorite, which is ClO with a minus charge. On the other end of the spectrum, with one more oxygen instead of one less or even more one less or two less, you have the perates, which would be perchlorate, which is ClO4 with a one minus charge. Now I'm not going to do bromine or iodine because they follow the same rule, but the ones that are slightly different are nitrate, NO3 with a minus charge, and nitrite, NO2. There's not hyponitrate or pernitrate, just these two. And some other ones to memorize are sulfate, because it's SO4 with a 2 minus charge, and then sulfite, which is SO3 with a 2 minus charge, and then phosphate, which is PO4 with a 3 minus charge, or phosphite. 3 with 3 minus charge, or even hypophosphite, 2 with 3 minus charge. Now as far as the sulfates and the phosphates go, these are the only ones that are available, these are the only ones that are real, same with the nitrates, chlorite, or bromite, or iodite, have all four, but you will need to memorize all 16 of those, but you also need to memorize these nine down here at the bottom. And we're also going to talk about inorganic acids at this point, which is basically these dissolved in water. Or fully ionized in water is really the way to say it. But there are some specific endings for the acids that are important. If your anion has an ide ending, like chloride, it'll be a hydroic acid. If it has an ite ending, like chlorite, it'll be an OS acid. And if it has an 8 ending, like chlorate, it will be an ic acid. Now there are seven main strong acids when they're fully ionized in water. 
sulfuric acid, nitric acid, hydroiodic acid, hydrobromic acid, perchloric acid, chloric acid, and hydrochloric acid. These you will also need to memorize the formulas for, so I'll wait for this a second. Now the other thing to talk about are acid salts. Now, acid salts contain one ionizable hydrogen atom and have at least one negative charge. The only thing you need to remember with these are the prefixes. This is the older naming system, but we do use it. This means there's one hydrogen, which would be something like bicarbonate, which you might recognize sodium bicarbonate, baking soda, or di means that there are two hydrogens present. And with that, that should conclude episode 10 of Chemistry in 15 minutes or less. Feel free to leave questions or suggestions in the comments below, and be sure to follow the in video links, check out the playlist, or head over to my channel for more videos on chemistry review. As always, I hope this is helpful, and have a great night.